my name is Maya and I'm an interpreter for California State Parks and I'm based out of Patrick's Point State Park in Sumig Village. And today I'm going to be talk, talking about uh, abalone shells and their significance to me and to women. So I'm going to pretend we're in uh, Patrick's Point. This is Agate Beach. <laughs> And this is uh, Brad Sumig. <laughs> and so this is what I'm talking about. This is a full abalone shell. So some of the significance it has, I'm just going to step off the screen. So, not doing um, so this is an abalone shell. And so there's a story behind abalone shells. And there's an abalone woman, which I'm not going to tell the story right now. I'm just going to explain what the things are significant for. So this, this shell has different um, kind of like water-like look to it with, they almost look like uh, teardrops or tears. So these, um, this side of the abalone re represents the woman's tears. And then the other side represents the blood from her feet which is part of the story that it talks about how she was running away and she was um, crying and running on the rocks. And so the rocks would catch her tears and the blood from her feet. And so this is why abalone looks at this way. And so this is, um, symbolizes women. The next picture is kind of like what that looks like in like necklaces in different shapes rather than just the full abalone shell. So on the, I guess my left is me <laughs> wearing an abalone necklace with pine nuts. So that's, uh, you can see the red really good in that picture. And then on the left, there's, it's kind of, the sun's kind of in the way, but you can kind of see that the greenish bluish side of that and so they have um, a lot of them have different colors and different um, just it looks different sometimes and then um, other times it looks completely blue and green but the the back side is usually the red side then here's another picture of like some different types of necklaces to kind of give a um, side by side that's um, also me right there with another abalone necklace. I don't really see any more abalone other than way over there <laughs> on the end. But that's mainly some short rundown of what abalone shells look like and what we use them for. We also wear them in uh, flower dances because it is a woman's dance. So we bring in those, that shell, uh, the necklaces. And if there's any uh, questions, we can answer those. So we'll be looking for you guys' questions. If you do have any, go ahead and pop them down in the comments and we'll be, we'll be more than happy to talk about it. Um, Maya, I, of course, have some questions for you, as per usual. Um, so we saw two different pictures of you wearing abalone necklaces. Um, are you able to share what, what those were for? Um, that was for this one right here was my senior pictures. This is some of them. Um, this is was for a kind of like demonstration type of um, gathering. I don't know how to explain it. It was like a closed gathering for certain people. And we did a demonstration of um, like a flower dance round, which is around an hour or so. So that um, we just kind of did a demonstration. Cool. Now, we do have some questions now coming in from our audience. Um, Lorena was wondering, do you make the jewelry yourself? 
So may, the main things that we do use, they're used to use were the things that they could gather along the beach and along this area. And now we use, um, yeah, we do make our own um, regalia. We don't uh, buy it anywhere. Um, so we do individually string all these beads and things and necklaces can get up to 50 strands or some crazy number strands of necklace <laughs> with the necklace. And the, the necklace we saw you wearing, did you make that yourself or was it made by? It was borrowed. Okay. I do have my own um, abalone necklace. It's, um, I think it was the last picture, but um, it's a black abalone and that's one of the abalones that are going extinct. But that's, I think, a four or five strand necklace. We have another one here uh, from Amanda it says, how old is the abalone in the first photo? Do you know? This one? Yeah. I honestly have no clue. <laughs> I don't know the life cycle or um, this is just an example picture of what it looks like all intact. Awesome. And we have another question um, It says, where or how do you get the abalone? that you use in the necklaces? So there is a local um, shell store kind of, it's um, see around us and there's a man and a woman and I think his mother that um, sell shells and different beads and um, yeah, lots of shells. And that's where locally we get a lot of our, um, our shells or from other places or um, that's like the main place that my family gets those shells. And then we string them into certain things that we need. And do you know if the if those people gather locally, if they're if they're gathering abalone locally or if it's just something that they have? I believe it is locally. He does have a person that goes out and he goes and gets it. And then he brings it back and he buys it and I'm assuming to tote loads because people buy it all the time. <laughs> I have another question from my mom. It says, is it passed down generations? Necklaces yes. or regalia? Um, I think it depends. Sometimes they go to museums and they sit in museums and other times it's, um, it is by family or from, um, or you make it yourself. For me, it's, um, all the stuff that I wear for, um, Fresh dances, which are um, a healing ceremony for a young child. Um, I wear all my own regalia and sometimes I borrow a few things, but for the most part, most people have their own things made for, exactly for them or they uh, borrow from another person. Excellent. There's another question here. Um, so this is, I think, Commenting further on the how old the abalone shells, someone was saying that age is measured in inches, potentially. Um, so that could be a decent sized shell. Um, really quickly, I did, I did want to pull up an image of what abalone looks like in the wild, because we so frequently see um, the shells and things in jewelry, but um, just we're not so familiar with seeing it as a um, as an actual living organism. So I'm gonna share the screen really quick and I just pulled up a quick picture that I'll, I'll just share. So bam, abalone in the, in the wild. And that's that backside that has the more red on it, right? Yes. I right, some pictures of mollusks, gotta love them. Excellent. We'll check one last time to see if we have any more questions coming in. Does not look like we do. Oh. oh. <laughs> all right. Well, I think we can wrap up for the day. Um, thank you so much, Maya, for all of your wisdom and for sharing um, your knowledge of abalone and just absolutely beautiful to see and wonderful to hear about. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
And if you guys do have any more questions, feel free to um, still pop them down in the comments. We can always come back to the comments and answer them later. Um, thank you guys all so much for joining. And uh, we'll see you again on our next on our next live stream, three o'clock tomorrow. Bye. Oh, I have another one. Oh, How do you make funny. necklaces? Um, sometimes we are we use sinew, um, and we string glass beads or abalone or dentalium, or um, there's tons of other shells that I can't think of the name of, but. Um, just string it on like a regular necklace. And, and can you explain for, for people who might not know what sinew is? Um, it's a part of a deer's bones, like joints kind of. It's a, like it's embedded in all their you know, the, yeah. <laughs> and they're kind of like by their bones and their joints. It's like stringy animal meat. <laughs> yeah. So all right. whoops. Did we lose our, our background image? That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up. Thank you guys so much for your questions. And if you do have any more, we can always come back around and, and answer them. Thank you so much for checking into our live streams. We appreciate you guys. Oh, bye. <laughs>